well, this video really screwed up. For some reason, it didn't capture the audio portion of it. Um, so I guess I will just go into talking about the used oil sample that I sent in for analysis and what the results were. And hopefully you guys will find this video informative. Um, it, you can kind of see that, you know, I was doing a video here, towing and talking about the truck and how it performs and whatnot, and just my overall experiences with it over the last year and a bit since I bought it brand new, and what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Um, you know, heavy load on the, the trailer, I actually had 35,000 pounds altogether. I scaled it um, and whatnot, but anyways, I won't uh, go into too much... Uh, about that I'll try and make another video and figure out why my uh, camera wasn't recording audio for this I, I don't know what the heck went on but yeah frustrating I actually uploaded this video once already and uh, went to check on it and realized there's no audio so rather embarrassing for the 12 people that saw it before uh, before I pulled it down but um, yeah so I will talk about the sample results and uh, uh, what came back so hopefully you find this informative and enjoy it and yeah we'll go from there all right so good news i got my oil analysis results back and there's nothing um concerning whatsoever so i can read the report here it says the flag data does not indicate an immediate need for maintenance action continue to observe the trend and monitor equipment and fluid conditions flag data may be wearing or contamination from overhauled or new unit potassium in the engines may be from protective coatings, from bearings or heads, and or solder flux from oil cooler. Suspect most of the copper may be coming from the lubricant cooler and or EGR cooler as applicable. Copper is at a minor level. Aluminum is at a minor level. <coughs> Excuse me. Aluminum sources in the engines include pistons, block and components, intake manifold head, bearing caps, thrust bearings, main rod bearings, overlay or backing, aluminum silica or contamination from grease. Boron is slightly low for this lubricant, which is the AMSOIL Signature Series uh, Max Duty 5W40. Boron levels may, be nat may naturally decline with use, so this is not cause for concern. And the oil is suitable for continued use. Observe trends in the future. So I tested this oil at the 20% uh, oil life uh, remaining on the oil minder on the truck there. And I had, uh, what was it, 200 and I think 78 hours on it. And the kilometers was 15,732 or just under 10,000 miles. 16,000 miles is, or sorry, 16,000 kilometers is 10,000 miles. Um, Total mileage on the truck is 42,653 kilometers at the time of uh, doing this sample. Now, um, what else does it say here? So I'm not sure if you can see, I put a screen, like an image of the sample report back. It says, so fuel dilution is less than 2%. Soot right now is at 0.4%. Water is less than 0.1%. Uh, the viscosity is 13.1, which is pretty good. Uh, it doesn't say what the acid number. So the total base number is 2.88. So that's good. So there's still adequate base uh, neutralizers in the oil to... Uh, I guess that's what's called base neutralizers, but um, enough to neutralize combustion acids. I, this is a pretty high TBN oil. I'm not sure where it starts off at. It's probably close to 12. Um, I could look up the specs. So that tells me that the oil is probably good, you know, at least, you know, another 40% uh, more. Um, oxidization is at 16 on this, and then nitration is at 11. I'm not, you know, super up on all that stuff. I'm basically just looking for you know, any flagged um, uh, results in terms of wear metals or uh, contaminants or fuel dilution and whatnot. So, yeah, so far so good. This is uh, positive. I'm pleased. I was a little nervous. Um, the next sample I'll do will be once the oil minder hits 5%. 
I did one on my 2019 F450 when the oil minder was at 4% and the results were the same. The oil came back perfectly serviceable and uh, safe for continued use. I, of course, changed it out at that. I never pushed it any longer. Um, but yeah, so all in all, uh, great news. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll see. I might in the future push it a little bit longer and see what it's like if I stretch this out to say, you know, uh, let the oil minder go down to 5% and reset it and then test it at 8, 80%, let's say. So like 120% of what the computer says. Um, I am running uh, like their AMS oil filter as well. So, you know, it should be, um, you know, perfectly adequate to, to run that much longer and then sample it. You know, of course, with this kind of stuff, you want to you wanna test it and then go off of data. You don't want to just uh, run the truck. Oh, you got uh, full synthetic and, you know, uh, synthetic filter and you figure you're safe to run it for three times the manufacturer's drain interval. You're not. You should only do that with uh, proper, you know, sampling and lab results to back it up. Because, I mean, you can have an engine that's got bad injectors and you run into fuel dilution and your, you're, you know, oil's no good. You know, it's not even made its, uh, you know, standard drain interval in terms of mileage or hours. So I had that happen with my other truck. Um, you know, I was starting to see 5, 5.3, 5.4% fuel dilution. And, you know, that's pretty common in some of the earlier generation uh, trucks with DPF and stuff, like the Fords and Dodges and GMs. But the Fords, especially like 2010 to 2011, or no, 2008 to 2010, so the 6.4s, they were notorious for f uh, fuel dilution. So like my 6 liter... Yeah, they're not known for fuel dilution at all. So I had an injector that was kind of leaking down a bit. So I've got a new um, samples on that as well since I've changed the injectors on it. And it'll be interesting to see, you know, it should come back with like no fuel dilution. But um, yeah, it's really, you know, an invaluable tool to, to be able to send in a used oil sample and kind of get a, you know, like a spot check on the health of your engine. It's kind of like doing a blood check on, blood test on, you know, a person to see what their overall, you know, blood panel looks like. It gives you, you know, insight to your motor that you just wouldn't have otherwise. So, um, and also, you know, like if you're trying to maximize uh, your drain intervals on your oils, right? Like, you know, based on those lab results, uh, how far you can push that uh, oil, inter oil interchange, uh, or sorry, oil change interval uh, out to, right? I mean, these computers are not you know they're not sampling uh the oil in real time they're they're you know telling you how much oil life you have left based on an algorithm right so it's you know measuring and monitoring your throttle position engine load uh fuel usage because i mean they do meter how much fuel the engine is going through um and then you know factor it on that right so i i'm surprised um you know that there's as much oil life left over at uh the mileage that you know you're getting before the oil minder tells you to uh change your oil right so that i don't know what it's like with a regular oil though like i mean these trucks you know as long as you're running the the current uh api rated oil like you can run a dyno oil um i'm not sure at that point you know how those oils would stand up i'm running you know top tier oil for you know and all my stuff so that may be different you know you may test these oils out at like five percent oil life remaining with uh like a standard um you know run-of-the-mill dyno oil and find that the additive packages that are in the oil have depleted to the point that it's just uh not serviceable anymore so yeah i don't plan on ever running like non-synthetic oil in this truck i run it and everything so I won't ever be able to test it and confirm, but there is a difference even within, you know, um, Amsoil's uh, oil lineup in terms of what vehicle likes what oil. I mean, the six liters, for example, they, uh, they shear 40 weight oil down. They don't, uh, they don't tolerate it very well. It's not that they don't tolerate it. They just, it's not as robust in uh, terms of uh, longevity in the engine 
uh, for runtime because the injectors just shear, shear the oil down. So they they actually do better with like a 30 weight oil. Same thing with, you know, Land Cruiser diesel I had. I can't remember which oil I had in it. I think it was the 1030, heavy duty 1030 I ran in it. And it didn't test as well as the 1540 heavy duty marine oil. And no, same runtime, but that engine just seemed to like that, you know, 1540 oil better, even though those engines are actually specced, um, you know, for a 1030 oil. So yeah, it's uh, kind of one of those things, like if you have any interest in automotive stuff, um, you know, this is something I think, uh, you know, anybody that's got expensive equipment like that, um, it's worth you know, it's weight and gold to do, right? Gives you a baseline to go off of as well. So you're not just, you know, blindly changing your oil, um, you know, more often than you need to. And you're not worried about running it out too long as well. So anyways, that's, uh, that's great news. Um, yeah. And like I always say, if you like my videos, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and I look forward to reading and engaging with you guys in the comment section. Thanks for watching.